My name is Daisy Skelly. I am currently the ESOL coordinator and teacher in Wright City, Missouri. I am also an adjunct instructor with Lindenwood University. In November 2019, I completed my dissertation defense entitled, A Mixed Method Study of Applying Andragogical Practices to an Online TESOL Teacher Training Course at a Midwestern University. Last June, I presented my initial findings at the Cambio de Colores Conference in Columbia, Missouri. Today, I would like to share with you my completed study. Thank you for your interest, and if you have any questions, my contact information is included at the end of the presentation. I came into working with English learners when I rejoined the teaching field after staying home with my three children. I first encountered families learning English as a parent educator with the Parents as Teacher program. From there, I was hired as the ESL paraeducator at a diverse elementary school with over 100 EEOs. I was part of a team, two full-time ESL teachers and me. Together, we supported the EELs as they learned academic English and content at the same time. Most of their teachers were very familiar with English learners and used instructional strategies to help them develop their English proficiency. It was very much a part of their everyday lesson planning and instruction. I was so used to this that when I became the ESOL coordinator and teacher at another district, I was not prepared for what I encountered. Many of the teachers in my new district had limited experience working with ELs, and there were very few ELs in their classes. Over the next few years, our EL population experienced rapid growth, so more teachers had more ELs in their classrooms. This is a typical trend in the United States. Similarly, the teachers that now had more ELs in their classes were not adequately prepared to teach them. As the ESL coordinator, I tried to find ways to offer professional development and support to these teachers. And while that has worked to an extent, I came to realize that this training needed to come earlier for teachers. They needed to learn about ELs in their teacher training programs. <clears throat> As an adjunct instructor at a private university, I had the opportunity to develop a study that incorporated my ideas about teacher training programs. During this study, one TESOL teacher methods course at a Midwestern private university was examined to discover if the knowledge, pedagogical skill, and self-efficacy levels of pre-service teachers increased and if their perceptions of English learners became more positive. I hope to discover if this course content and methodology were meeting the needs of the adult learner and fulfilling the requirements set forth by the state teacher certification program. The research results were used to guide curriculum development and instruction and add to the body of research about pre-service teachers and application of the principles of andragogy to an online TESOL teacher training course, specifically investigating three principles of andragogy, self-concept of the learner and the learner's ability to be self-directed, prior experience of the learner, and readiness to learn. Over 4.8 million English learners are enrolled in U.S. public schools in 2014-15. English learners are one of the fastest growing subgroups of students across the United States, even in rural districts that have not previously had English learners. This means that more and more mainstream classroom teachers have English learners in their classrooms. While there had been an increase in the number of English learners in schools across the nation, the number of teachers with experience or training to teach English learners had not increased at the same rate. All children in the United States were entitled to equal access to a public elementary and secondary education, regardless of their parents' actual or perceived national origin, citizenship, or immigration status. Without special preparation, even good teachers may find it difficult to meet the needs of English language learners. The large and persistent gaps in academic outcomes for English language learners compared with other students indicate that something must be wrong with the teaching approaches we're using. When the reauthorization of the federal government's Elementary and Secondary Schools Act, also known as ESSA, occurred in 2015, states were required to develop plans to address the needs of English learners. In Missouri, additional competencies for teaching ELs were required for teacher certification. This required universities to re-examine and update their requirements for students. At the Midwestern University where the study took place, TESOL methods became the requirement for elementary and early childhood education majors. 
Considering the current educational situation facing mainstream classroom teachers and the readiness to receive and teach English learners in their classrooms, I began to consider if I could contribute to the solution. As a teacher of English learners and adjunct professors, I wanted to know, could one course really make an impact on how prepared pre-service teachers felt about teaching English learners? And could a course designed for English adult learners using the principles of andagogy fulfill this purpose? Current research appeared to support that it could. Homer and Hamer found learning in the areas of cultural diversity and inclusion did occur while pre-service teachers were enrolled in teacher education courses. Pre-service teachers developed positive attitudes toward culturally diverse students, learned how to include adaptive classroom practices into their teaching repertoire, and recognize the importance of a collaborative classroom. Similar studies of teacher preparation courses by Marco Sancolano and King indicated that pre-service teachers experienced a positive change in attitudes and understandings toward ELs after just one course. Thus, they recommended the requirement was valuable and should continue. Villegas et al. said, as prospective teachers learn strategies for teaching ELs and become more confident in their ability to do so, they may also become more open to having these students in their classrooms. When discussing teacher training and professional development for teachers, how adults learn was an important concept to understand. Generally accepted as the art and science of teaching adults, andragogy was based on the work of Malcolm Knowles. Knowles believed in the connection between learning and characteristics of the adult learner, such as life experience, self-concepts, and readiness to learn. Adult learning environments needed to provide learning opportunities for the learning to be more individualized and personalized. Further, adults came to the environment capable of being self-directed in their learning. Although some adults needed assistance transitioning from dependent learner roles, as in pedagogy, to self-directed roles. Online learning environments can be used very successfully with adult learners because they are available 24-7, are facilitator friendly, and are learner controlled. Blackley and Sheffield found students want personalized, flexible learning and instantaneous feedback and communication. To streamline toward this goal, the author suggested online course writers use andragogical principles to create their online learning environments. Knowles noted, as children become adults and move up the educational ladder, they begin to see themselves as less passive and more active in their learning. Adults become more responsible for and invested in their learning. Thus, they become involved in the actual process of learning. Blackley and Sheffield stated, we seek to help students to cross the threshold from a teaching student to a student teacher, developing their teacher identity and helping them feel ready to take their place as members of the teaching profession. The study was designed as a mixed methods comparison study using a non-randomized sample. Participants were enrolled in one of three sections of T-cell teacher training courses, two undergraduate and one graduate with two different instructors. There were 45 survey respondents and 31 consented participants. The course was taught during an eight-week online-only environment using Canvas LMS. We used the text Making Content Comprehensible for English Learners, the PSYOP model, written by Echeverria, Vote and Short. Participants completed all required coursework, including a final PSYOP lesson plan assignment. The research questions and hypothesis were paired when analyzing the quantitative and qualitative data. These are the major findings in the quantitative results. I rejected the null hypothesis in the category of self-efficacy, as the change from the pre-survey to the post-survey results were statistically significant. I failed to reject the null hypotheses in the categories of knowledge, pedagogical skills, and perceptions of ELs. Overall qualitative results revealed positive changes by participants in all categories. I discovered personal strengths as a learning facilitator and an andragogical rather than pedagogical orientation when used when facilitating. Thus, the course met the needs of the adult learner. Analyzing the data of students' perceptions of English learners, a change was indicated toward a more positive perspective, especially among the undergraduate students. For pre-service teachers' perceptions of their knowledge levels of English learners, all participants experienced a positive change. 
In addition, all groups of participants responded agree or strongly agree that the course increased their knowledge of English learners. Next, I examined the perceived pedagogical skill levels of pre-service teachers. All students perceived higher levels of pedagogical skills on the post-survey than they did on the pre-survey. Additionally, respondents agreed that the course increased their pedagogical skill levels. The positive changes were also indicated by some of their narrative reflections. When I hear ELL now, I have a completely different outlook and respect for those students. This course has taught me ways to interact with English language learners, use and apply different instructional strategies to help the students grasp the concept, and how to use background knowledge to connect with students. This course was very beneficial to me as an educator. I learned so much about ELL students that I did not know. The information that I gained from this class, I'm going to apply immediately as I prepare for the upcoming school year. Next, the self-efficacy levels of pre-service teachers for teaching English learners were examined. There were enough statistical evidence to reject the null hypothesis three for all participants in the category of self-efficacy. Thus, the course significantly changed all participants' self-efficacy levels for teaching ELs. Two post-survey questions specifically asked participants about their confidence and preparedness in teaching ELs. All participants indicated an increase in confidence. 90.3% responded they felt prepared to teach ELs, and 96.7% felt more confident in their ability to teach ELs. I'm so excited to learn more about the SIOP model, so when I think about the term English language learner, I can be confident I will be the teacher that ELs need. By being a participant in this class, my knowledge, skills, and confidence was most definitely increased. Taking this course has added so much value to my perspective of teaching. Several students said they would re recommend this course to others and were glad the course was required. I am a student of andragogy and as such, I had an interest in learning if the required online TESOL teacher methods course was facilitated in a way that was developmentally appropriate for adult learners. I specifically examined how three of the six principles of andragogy, self-concept of the learner and the learner's ability to be self-directed, prior experience of the learner, and readiness to learn were applied to the course. Self-directedness of the learner was represented by course offering preferences. Prior experiences of the learner were represented by the knowledge and pedagogical skill levels. All participants indicated that the course met their needs as learners. In addition, all students experienced a positive change during the course. It is important to note that when studying andragogy, one is really learning to understand oneself as a learner and a facilitator. Much of the exploration was self-discovery. I used this process to become a better teacher, and in doing so, it helped me to become a better person. The reauthorization of ESSA required state education departments and universities to add competencies for teaching culturally and linguistically diverse students in response to changing national and state demographics. Many, <clears throat> many participants indicated a lack of exposure to ELs, so a TESOL methods course was an important requirement for pre-service teachers. Graduates of the program were knowledgeable and capable of meeting the needs of culturally and linguistically diverse students, and therefore graduates had the opportunity to become knowledge leaders in their schools and communities. A few of my recommendations are, the competency requirement should continue to be a requirement for teacher certification and become even more embedded within our teacher preparation programs. A practicum or service learning component working with culturally and linguistically diverse students should be included in teacher training programs and the course should be con completed concurrently with a reading or writing methods course and practicum. The university should continue to integrate instructional strategies for ELs into other teacher training courses, and faculty throughout the School of Education should collaborate when designing and implementing courses. Recommendations for future research in include continuing to investigate the SIOP method as a pedagogical tool, the effectiveness of supports and modifications for ELs, the development of a comprehensive list of essential knowledge and pedagogical skills, and the transition of student to student teacher to classroom teacher, the needs of the adult learner, and the application of the principles of andragogy to online learning environments, specifically teacher training courses. 
In conclusion, this study was an investigation of the knowledge, pedagogical skills, and self-efficacy levels of pre-service teachers and their perceptions of English learners. Study participants were enrolled in an online TESOL teacher training course at a Midwestern university. Changes in the knowledge, pedagogical skill, and self-efficacy levels of pre-service teachers continued as they progressed through the remaining coursework and student teaching experience. Their perceptions of English learners may have also changed through exposure and experience. Using a course design with an application of andragogical principles facilitated growth and self-directedness and eased the transition from college student to classroom teacher. The real reason behind this study is my personal mission. As the English language development specialist, my mission is to create a positive learning environment that utilizes current research and best practices to advocate and empower English learners, their families, and their teachers to successfully develop proficiency in reading, writing, listening, and speaking academic English. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me at dskelly at Thank you.